and welcome to Best of the Bets. My name is Christina Nicolaides, where we're looking at all the very latest betting opportunities for this weekend's Premier League. And of course, it is the Easter bank holiday weekend. I have, as usual, regular guests, Gareth Walker, who's our bookie extraordinaire from Heaven Bets. Hello, Gareth. Hello, Christina. And Sam Diamond, who's our football expert and editor of bestofthebets.com. Hi, Sam. Hello. How are you doing? Not so bad. Nice cardigan. Thank you. We are going to start with uh, bottom of the form guide versus top of the form guide is Sunderland versus Manchester United. Gareth, what are the odds saying for this game? Sunderland are 5.9, the draw is 3.8 and Manchester United are 1.65. So if it could get any worse for Sunderland, I mean, it did this week. So Catamol's out and Fletcher's going to be out for the rest of the season. It's a, a real kick in the teeth for Sunderland, isn't it? <laughs> isn't Which, it? Yeah, it's ironic because uh, Lee Catamol is usually <laughs> the one doing the kicking in the teeth. Uh, it's made what had become a hard job for Sunderland a lot more difficult. And mm. it seems like the rest of the country has finally caught on to what uh, myself and Gareth have been saying all season. And the fact that Sunderland are in real trouble. They're not very good. They're not very good. They, they're, they they're were three points above relegation drop. Yeah, they were lifeless against Norwich, against 10-man Norwich. Yeah. Um, and it, it being a, a sort of a live televised game on a Sunday, everyone just got that opportunity to see just you know, how, how bad they are. Yeah. Um, they showed no sign of life when all the other sides at the bottom are. Uh, and now they've got these, these added problems and Danny Graham doesn't look to be scoring goals. Uh, well, I who's going that... to score it? Well, exactly. <laughs> and so I, I just can't really look beyond the away win, even though United are, have got a, another important game just 48 hours later. They well, that's, that's the one thing that you've really got to bear in mind here. I believe it's a four-point Christian Sunderland. We've got all of that based on the games that they've won when opposition have had players sent off, uh, which is an incredible run they've had. The problem I've got here with getting stuck into United is this, this big game on, on Easter Monday. It's worked out nicely for Sunderland, really. It's almost the best time you could possibly ask to play Manchester United with that, that game coming at 48 hours later. For those that think Sunderland can do something, Graham is 12 to score the first goal. Personally, I think United will win, but I wouldn't be going for a, a big margin of victory here. Maybe United to win by one goal is priced at 3.45. Uh, I think they'll be just looking to go and get the job done rather than anything too emphatic. One thing that Ferguson undoubtedly will be reminding his players of End of last season, looked like United were yeah. going to win the title. Sudden, uh, suddenly, a uh, stadium of light erupted because Manchester exactly. City had scored. All those Sunderland fans doing the Poznan and laughing at Manchester United, yeah. maybe regretting that now because they would have, have liked a favour from United. United have won the last six, kept five clean sheets in a row, and they've won the last four by being in the lead at half-time. Best first yeah. half record, half-time, full-time Manchester United for me. That's priced at 2.6. Um, I'm just going to go United to win by one, which is 3.45. So you've got a promotion for us, Gareth. Yeah, this game is the, the big game of the weekend that Heavenbet have got the big games, big names offer on. So if Wayne Rooney scores the first goal in this yeah. match, then Heavenbet will be refunding losing correct score and first last goal scorer bet. So maybe look for an alternative angle with that insurance. What about if uh, Sinji Kagawa scores? Yeah, good idea, actually. He's priced at eight. Wouldn't put you off him. Definitely not. OK, we are going to move on to our next game, Southampton versus Chelsea. Southampton are 3.7, the draw's 3.6, and Chelsea, slightly odds against, 2.05 for this one. It's hard to make a case for really backing them, isn't it? Especially when Southampton have, have got such a good record of uh, turning over top teams this yeah. season. That win against Liverpool has, has given them a bit of breathing space at the bottom, I think now four points from, yeah. from the bottom three. So they'll relish this game, um, and, and some of their players have really clicked into great form and I think the one area that they've resolved uh, is their goalkeeping situation and I think Arthur Boric was excellent against Liverpool. He was. Really, really commanding and he, a, a very um, fine penalty save in injury time against Norwich before that. So they're looking more assured there at full back. Klein and Shaw were excellent against Liverpool and um, Morgan Schneidlin is just improving all the time. Even Jay Rodriguez now is, is winning the fans over. So there's a lot to be positive about Southampton and Chelsea just now with this, this fixture pile up they yeah, have. Yeah. You just want to be sort of taking them on at all opportunities. Um, I see that uh, Mourinho has um, been uh, backed into a return at the bridge, but I think that will mean Benitez will want to go out with a trophy. So I think the upcoming FA Cup games and Europa League games will be his priority. Yeah. Um, I think this is a good opportunity for Southampton. I really like Southampton here. They were great at home to Man City, great yeah. at home to Liverpool. And I'll, I'll go 3 1 to, to Southampton, prepared to be bullish. Really like Southampton at 3.7. 3 1's 3 18.3. Ricky Lambert, always like the look of him to score first, 7.3. All, all manner of, of angles of getting with, with Southampton. I just think this, this Chelsea fixture pile up is just a, a massive factor here. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. not the same Chelsea side that, that won 5 1 at Southampton in yeah. the Cup. I, I like Southampton too. 
Yeah. I mean, having said that, Chelsea have got some decent reserves. Let's not let's not dismiss the reserve team, but yeah. just attention and focus, all the rest of it. They'll be really have that eye on on Stamford Bridge on Monday. Okay, our uh, next game we're going to look at is Arsenal versus Reading. We know Walcott's a doubt for the match, and Reading have a new manager, Nigel Adkins. So well, he says he dreams of Reading survival. I think he, he needs much better than a, than a dream. Well, it's the most one-sided game of the weekend on paper. Arsenal 1.25, the draw 6.3, and Reading 12, if you think that Adkins can get them off to a, a dream start. I think what he will try to do, and I think it will probably be uh, carrying it on from, from what they did at Old Trafford, is try and keep Reading fairly solid because they yeah. played Arsenal uh, twice this season uh, and they've conceded 12 goals. So I think that will be his first port of call. He did very similar with uh, it, taking new managerial jobs at Scunthorpe and Southampton. His yeah. first priority was the defence. Uh, he kept three clean sheets in his first four Scunthorpe games and then four and six at Southampton. I think... He'll try and keep Reading fairly solid. They played a 4-1-4-1 formation at United. Yeah. Um, I think they'll do something similar. Uh, but I, I just can't really sort of see him keeping Arsenal out for the afternoon. Um, I think they might get him to the break, goalless, but then Arsenal can step it up a gear. Uh, they've got good players and they'll win this one eventually. Gareth? Yeah, difficult to see even the impact of, a, of any new manager having enough of an impact for, for Reading to get anything here. Um, hopefully he'll find a better balance for Reading between defence and attack and I think yeah. a couple of the, the players that McDermott favoured that I'm not even convinced the championship quality, never mind Premier League quality, he'll probably get the get the boot. Um, yeah, Reading would take, a, take positives from a, a narrow defeat, I guess. You know, a draw would be, be, be a great result for them. I like looking at, at under goals here. It could be a, a frustrating afternoon for Arsenal one way or the other. Maybe they, they might score early but then not really have to go on the offensive because Reading won't come at them too much or it could be another one of these games at the Emirates where it takes a long time for Arsenal to break through. There's been quite a few of those this yeah, season. Yeah, when we've seen defensive teams go to Arsenal with a game plan, they have tended to struggle. So it could well be something similar. Yeah, I mean, under two and a half, um, under two and a half goals, that is. That's priced at 2.8. I, I quite like that bet because you can't imagine, uh, for all Arsenal's comedy defence, you can't imagine Reading causing that many problems. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 2.8 for that bet, I like. Um, that, that would be the way I'd be going for this one. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to. I'm prepared to believe that Reading can hold them to the break. So draw half time, and then Arsenal to prevail, prevail full time. Yeah, that's priced at 4.2. Uh, maybe a correct score interest, something like 2 0 is 5.6. That, that sort of thing. I wouldn't be going too mad on, on yeah. Arsenal banging in a load of goals. OK, um, next uh, match we're looking at Wigan versus Norwich. Wigan 1.95, the draw's 3.6, Norwich 4.2. Well, Wigan have won four of their last five in all competitions, so they're getting into that winning habit mm -hmm. at the right stage of the season, which is what they tend to do. Uh, the manner of their winning at Newcastle may have been fortunate, but I think the win itself was fully deserved. Well, they deserve yeah. a bit of luck anyway. The return game of that, they were, yeah. they were, they were stitched up by the referee, so yeah, enjoy a bit of luck. So well. I think a win here will take them out of the relegation zone for a, for a day, at the yeah. very least. Um, no, it's just really flat for me. They've just, they just become draw specialists, yeah. um, five of the last seven and six of the last eight. So yeah, I think they're, they're, they're safe for the season, and I think it's all now starting to be about next season. Uh, having trouble scoring goals, but they've made this this flagship signing in, in Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Um, so they'll be terribly excited about that for the new season. Uh, they'll be filled feel, in a third choice goalkeeper because of um, Buns sending off. But I just think this is a game we're going to have to win. They've got three away games in the league to follow. Um, although they have you know, produced some sort of better performances of late away from home. No clean sheets at home this season, so they need to, need to do that. But I expect Wigan to win here. But I think it'll be, I think it'll be tough. Be it'll be a tough afternoon. One point nine five is it's tempting. Yeah, Norwich is solid. They only one win in nine, but you saw the, the resilience and fighting qualities at, at Sunderland. Um, yeah, I'm almost tempted to go with one each here because just Wigan have just got this lack of killer instinct. They, sh they should be, they should win more games than they do. Yeah. And yeah, it could could not quite be the uh, the the outcome that they want in here. So I, I agree I like with that. One nil to Wigan. I think Wigan will just, they're just getting into that, that winning habit now. And I think it's, it's the right time to do it. The three times these two have met in the Premier League, both teams have scored. So, yeah, I think you're sort of looking at 2-1 Wigan. 2-1 Wigan, which is 7.8. Certainly would be good for the, the relegation battle if that, yeah. if that happens. Mm. Yeah, keep it really interesting. With Tottenham chasing a Champions League spot, they are away to Swansea. And we're going to find out what Mike Holden has to say about this particular game. I think I think going to Swansea this weekend, I think it's a good fixture, just as it was a good fixture for Arsenal two weeks ago. Um, the season cannot get any better for Swansea now, so you've got to worry about the incentive that's there. They're already in Europe. 
You know, the, the, the no relegation problems whatsoever. Um, and I think that was kind of the difference when they played Arsenal a couple of weeks ago. I think I think the, the incentive was all with Arsenal you, and it was clearly evident in the performance. Um, so I can see Tottenham going there, taking the points and, you know, keeping their assault on the top four places going this weekend. So that that's probably the better of Saturday's action for me is, is Spurs to win at Swansea. He likes Tottenham there. They're priced at 2.3 to win this one. Swansea 3.25, the draw 3.4, and then Mike's tip Spurs 2.3. OK, what other games are we liking for Saturday? I'm really liking Man City versus Newcastle. Well, we all know which way you'll be going with that one. I assume 1.3 Man City doesn't tempt you. You've got the draw at 5.4 and Newcastle at 10.1. I'm actually going to go for the draw. Draw 5.4. Uh, the game I like actually is the Everton Stoke game, uh, which is the, the late kickoff. I think you've got to look at the not being many goals here. Uh, Fellaini and Pienaar both missing for Everton. Yeah. Real big losses. Got to look at the unders here. I think it's a really, really solid bet. Under two and a half goals. Yeah. Priced at 1.8. Or you can go under two, uh, which is basically if there's exactly two goals, you get your money back. That's priced at 2.3. There's incredible stat. Stoke Premier League games, under under one and a half goals. Has copped 14 out of 30 times for Stoke this season. Um, Certainly a good game. I'm sure Heaven Bet will see a lot of business uh, people backing correct score and first yeah. goal scorers on this one because of the nil-nil money back offer that we've got. If any game finishes nil-nil, uh, we refund losing correct score and first last goal scorer bets. This game's got to be a, a contender for nil-nil, although I, yeah. I think Everton, I'd like to think Everton will just nick it by the odd goal. But yeah, yeah I can't imagine it'll be a particular goal first. Yeah, I think if you wanted to look at a goal scorer there, Leighton Baines is a good option, he's 11. Yeah. Uh, the other games, I'm not sure, really sure how you're going to make a case for Newcastle getting anything at um, the Etihad, Etihad Stadium because they've lost their last six to Man City and the last four by two or more goals. So, I'm just, Well, I'm just thinking City, the pressure's on City. There's no pressure really on... I don't think there's really any on... pressure on City. I, I don't think there's any pressure on them at all. They're going to finish second. Um, Newcastle, I think, are more concerned now with this trip to Benfica on Thursday. That's all their season's about now. Um, so I like Man City on the on the handicap minus uh, 1.5 on the Asian. That's priced at 1.9. I think the other game, West Brom uh, going to West yeah, Ham. Yeah, West Ham, yeah. Last four times they've met, the game's been drawn. Uh, West Brom hard to beat, West Ham hard to beat at home. I can yeah. see that end of the stalemate again. Uh, so that the prices for that one, West Ham 2.3, draw 3.4 and West Brom are 3.4 as well. Uh, one each there, 6.7. West Brom have only conceded one in the last three Premier League away games, but I've just got a, a fancy for West Ham. They're some pretty shoddy defending against Chelsea last week, but they've scored in all but one of their home games this season. There's something there, and I just think the, the extra desire might just nick it for them there. So you've heard what Gareth and Sam have said about Saturday's games. Now, we, uh, we've been asking you to tweet all week, and we have some of your tweets for Saturday. At Tom Millard says, oppose Sunderland. No idea who they're playing, but steal Granny's purse and oppose them. Not sure if we can condone stealing Granny's purse, no. but certainly back in United at 1.65 will be of interest to Tom. OK, and the other one of interest is a Sunderland-Southampton double over United-Chelsea with the FA Cup replay on the horizon, and that's from at North Monkey. He sounds a bit shrewd, North Monkey. Uh, that pays 20 for that double. Sunderland-Southampton for all of Sunderland's wars. I wouldn't put him off the, the thinking behind that bet. OK, uh, best bet, Gareth, for Saturday. My best bet, unquestionably, is Southampton to win it home to Chelsea, 3.7. Brilliant price for a, a team that are very much on the up. OK, Sam? Oh, I wanted that one. <laughs> pick um, something else. I'll pick something else. I will go for Manchester United half-time, full-time Sunderland, 2.6. OK. Um, I'm going to go for Newcastle to draw at the Etihad with Man City. That's priced at 5.4, ignoring the history books and going with your gut. For you to place your bets on any of the games happening on Saturday and much more, then do head to our website, which is uh, heavenbet.com. You can tweet us at Best of the Bets and use the hashtag if you can. And uh, you can watch this show back on our website, bestofthebets.com. Now, join us after the break where we look at Sunday's action. We look at that FA Cup replay between Chelsea versus Manchester United. And we look at some of the European games as well. See you then. Betting site from Poker Haven.